to realize the harmony of justice and compassion, we need to make a magical journey to the constellation of Taurus. Let us shut our eyes so that we may see with the eye of vision. Friends, let us ascend to the temple of the starry zodiac where each of us has our own house. We see before us a hill, a grassy hill studded with primroses, bird's eye, budding bluebells. We begin to ascend the hill, but as we do so, there are less flowers and it becomes more austere and we find great granite rocks with heather. On we climb and then we enter a mist. Find yourself now in a mist climbing this hill and we see a white temple crowning the hill with beautiful columns and a dome the color of the sky rising above the mist. And beyond that are the wheeling constellations. And among them is a comet with a long tail. Look at this. Now as we approach the temple becomes more clear. We are facing the south gate, guarded by two mighty female sphinxes. That is with women's bodies, eyes staring into space, and their wings reaching the heavens. Their land bodies deep in the earth. Come, let us follow the candidate and the procession within the temple. Within the temple is the perpetual flame of everlasting life, the vestal flame, flame of Brigid. It is guarded by four cherubim, the bull, the lion, the eagle, and the angel at four quarters. We pay honor to the flame and feel its warmth upon us. However, to balance this flame, there is a lovely little temple stream flowing along a marble conduit all round this mighty temple bringing a lovely tinkle sound before the 12 great stained glass windows. The temple has 12 beautiful windows representing, as we see from the sign above them, representing the 12 signs of the zodiac. No, but these signs are given to us by the Adepti, the Magi of old, so that we may rela relate to the reality of the stars, not through the sciences, but through our spirits. This is spiritual writing. The first priest addresses the candidate. Come, approach the window of Taurus. We now move across the temple and look at the tinkling stream and beyond it are three steps and a beautiful stained glass window. The third priest says, this window depicts a red-haired goddess seated on a white bull which is emerging from the sea. Descending from the stars of Taurus are 14 maidens who bathe in the ocean. Now suddenly a sharp wind bl blows and it throws the window open and we are faced with the constellation of Taurus. The third priest addresses the apprentice. Gaze upon the seven stars of the Hyades in V formation 
seven of the 14 Atlantides maidens. Within their etheric sphere is the mountain of Hursa, the paradise of creation. For what appears as earthly flaming stars, planets and space is but a symbol of a reality beyond. Here of this mountain of Horsag, this paradise, Ninurta the god created the mountain to save his people from the flooding of the Tigris. Here the ancient words written on tablets about this god king. Behold now, everything on earth rejoiced afar at Ninurta. The Lord made mourning disappear from the land. He made happy the spirits of the gods. Because of his mother's great joy at his great and heroic deeds, Ninurta addressed her. O lady, O Ninma, because for my sake you would enter the matchless land, the hill which I have set up. Let its name be Hursag, and you be its queen third priest addresses the apprentice. In this magical world, ruled by Ninma and Ninurta, only those who do great deeds are admitted. Pass through the window, if you dare, we shall follow. <laughs> we think of the bull, they're quiet cows, but this is the realm of the bull, I think. Imagine yourself now, entering this land, if you would, if you would do great deeds. We all know people who talk and talk and never do anything. When you wake up in the morning, what do you do? Enter and visualize what you would like to do in the future and see it as if it happens. Possible to write a letter to a minister or a county council compared with the ease of complaining about what they are not doing. The inertia that falls upon psychic people, those who are making this journey. Have you the moral courage to protest, to make a tree house to stop a road? to stand up to somebody being cruel to an animal, to stand up for yourself. Think, feel, and in your imagination, do. Because what you imagine now, you will do later. Imagine yourself defending people who are being ill-used, standing up to evil, not people. Never think of anybody as being evil, think they do evil, or they behave or think evil, but they have good in them. So you can stand up to evil by concentrating on the good and defending that. You can fight for the good in people or situations or any problem. Try and think of any problem you have and try and see its solution. We are faced by an enormous mountain, Hursag, and we cannot see its summit. It is the hill of endeavor. There are smaller foothills, but the brave ascend the mountain. Climb a foothill, a small problem, or, if you dare, follow the candidate and climb the mountain. But you cannot without help. You need divine help. Ask, ask Ninurta, Ninma, or whoever you admire. 
preferably in spirit world, because those on earth are having their own problems. Pray to deity in whatever form that you may be shown the hard path that you may follow climbing past these precipices, climbing down in order to get upwards, climb down a chasm and up. And you learn perhaps the secret. You cannot know the whole of your destiny, only what you will do in the next five minutes. Receive inspiration daily, receive it now. or all of us get together to save our earth from pollution we may do so imagine yourself now climbing up this mountain on your hands and knees holding rocks climbing and all the time you feel a wonderful wind coming to you, the wind of inspiration and hope. You don't feel more tired, you, of course it's the mountain air, you feel invigorated, strong, healthy. You feel a power now coming up your spine, right through your back, strengthening your arms and legs, your body. What's wrong with having a body? You have a spirit body and it's getting stronger as you climb, not weaker. You're learning to use it, that's why. You're your spirit body may have been flabby and weak and helpless. Now it's strong. You feel you have wings. And as you realize you have spiritual wings, you learn how to travel in this place. As you struggle up, you keep falling backwards. It's very difficult to climb in spirit world. How about visualizing yourself at the summit? Picture yourself now rising up the mountain there are those above who help you with their hands you reach the snowy summit and you receive a terrible shock because before you is a still higher mountain that had been hidden before and you know there is no end and yet the end is now and even as you think of that you find you can reach the further mountain and you look back and see you had only been climbing a foothill <laughs> and here receive inner information from your spirit and from those beyond you who will help And you smile at the brave king who made a hill. Was it a pyramid? He tried. Do you make your hill? And as you think this, you begin to climb down the hill. Down. And at the foot of the hill, are the company and the candidate and all look shining full of proud endeavor and nobility and no laughter no ridicule no contempt no cynicism can ever touch those who have reached the summit of the celestial mountain, for the summit is always there, even on a foothill. The third 
priestess says, let us return to the temple, standing outside the temple window of Taurus. We come back to the temple window. She addresses the apprentice, what did you discover? Apprentice. <laughs> I always thought paradise was a place of ease, was no work, no love, at least not ordinary love, no laws and no choices. I learned the opposite, that I need work, strict rules and choice as to whether I obey them or not. <laughs> the third priest smiles. You have passed the test. You find the tablet of Saturn and Capricorn in your hand. And we all rejoice. The candidate has found something different. Each one of us finds something different. And yet, it is the same lesson. The second priest now speaks. Look upon the other beautiful constellation of Taurus, the Pleiades, the other seven and Atlantides maidens. Within their magical orbit is the paradise of Dil Moon, land of the living, the pure, the bright. The lovers Enlil and Ninlil preside over this lovely haven. Here are the instructions which the goddess Nun Bar Shegunu gave to her daughter, the maid Lil Ninlil find love. Second priestess, in the pure stream, woman, bathe in the pure stream, Ninlil. Walk by the bank of the stream, Nunbirdu. The bright-eyed, the Lord, the great mountain father, Enlil, will see you, will forthwith embrace you, kiss you. And Ninlil obeyed her mother with joy. And Enlil saw her and embraced and kissed her. Theirs is the paradise of love and joy and beauty. To apprentice, rise to the Pleiades. We shall follow. Enter now the paradise of love, joy and beauty. And yet remember, as energy and activity fight inertia, so terrible emotions can destroy love and joy and happiness. Enter this paradise, but remember the lesson you learned as you climbed the hill. of those or one person you totally love and find the goddess, the god, within the other. Love is life, life is love. Find those you hate, you really love. Jealousy must be faced. Anger, hatred, not shunned or hidden, or covered up, faced. And the alchemy of love will transform these passions into energy, creation, brings wisdom, but love brings creation in arts, planets, mighty buildings, children. Through love find creation by transmuting the passions Not 
face what we feel. We share this with all creation. Mind varies from human to animal to God, but love is paramount in all. And a mother fox defending her cubs. A bird defending his mate. Love is in all engendered things. And deity divides itself so that goddess and god may love each other and so produce creation. Truth brings us upwards to deity. Love brings us down into creation, multiplication. And this also is of deity. This paradise sinks into an abyss. A valley, a chasm, volcano, fire. But this valley produces the delicate primrose, the butterfly, all emerge from this matrix, this black matrix. The black becomes many colored like a rainbow, like butterflies, dragonflies, every creature you can think of, dragons, dinosaurs. See this creativity that springs from love. Appreciate, enjoy, and join in, create. What do you want to create? What is your destiny to do, to create with others? In the many colors of the rainbow, the divergency. But even as you find joy and happiness, exaltation, ecstasis, you are called back. Second priestess, let us return. We come back feeling dazed. Our heart centers and plexus are blazing with fire and light. She talks to the candidate. What happened to you? The candidate looks equally dazed. Work and laws and thought whirl around the wheels. Conference. Love and peace are at the still center within the dark matrix is the void and within the void is love and joy and peace and from there we create the wheel I see says the priestess, what you've experienced is beyond words. Your heart shines forth to all, not to the one, to all. For you have reached center and passed the test. In your hand is the tablet of Venus and Taurus. With your two tablets in either hand, of Capricorn and Taurus, of Saturn and Venus, you will be both guide and be guided. You will love and have wisdom. And in both these shall harmony be born. And this is your destiny. The second priestess, Friends, let us gaze upon the constellation of Taurus. Behold a vision of the goddess Inanna shining forth from the constellation. Within her being are the Atlantides. Visualize the goddess of the fates. For in an Anna is your fate as you gaze into her eyes. But even as you receive the message of the Divine Mother, 
we are called back by the third priestess. Come back now with the company through the doorway of Taurus and into the temple of the Zodiac. We warm our hands at the perpetual flame and we solemnly leave the sacred temple through the south gateway past the two sphinxes, pondering on what we have been shown. We go down the hill, but suddenly our solemn mood is enlivened by awareness that the temple stream is coming with us. It flows down the hill and we accompany it back, back, and we hear the voice of the priest. Friends, let us return to the temple of Isis. Now what is strange is that we don't seem to be able to come properly back to the temple of Isis. We see a whole group of people in deep meditation. We see the candidate given two tablets of success. We hear the priesthood giving thanks to the deities. But we are now withdrawing. Come back to your own time and place. Leave the temple of Isis and error back to your own time and place. You are now back. Receive the blessings of the goddess Anana. May you create your own destiny with divine aid. Selah.